So this is the notes for section 1.4 graphs of functions. At this point you should have uh, read section 1.4 already before starting these notes. Um, the first thing that we're looking at is the idea of domain and range of a function. Um, we've, we've talked about what a function is, now we're looking at particular parts of a function. When we talk about the domain of a function, it's the set of allowable values for the independent variable. So any number, so if you have, for instance, a function, and, and remember we can write functions in a lot of different ways. We can write them as ordered pairs, we can write them as, as equations, we can graph them, There's a lot of different things we can do with functions. But if, if I have, for instance, an equation of y equals, say, 3 over x, okay? As I look at that function, the domain is all the numbers that I can put in for x. Anything that can go in there. So as I think about the, my domain, well, almost every number goes in there. There's only one number that causes a problem, and that's 0. And usually when I'm looking at the domain of a function, instead of wondering about what it is, I'm going to wonder about what it isn't. What is going to cause me a problem if I plug it in there? And obviously, if I put 0 in for x, I'm dividing by 0, and we know that that's something that we can't do. So the domain of the function is the numbers that I can put, it, put in for that independent variable. The range of a function is the set of values for the dependent variable that can result from any substitution for the independent variable. So when you've established what your domain is, the range is the values that can come out of the function. What are the values that I could get for y? or the dependent variable, okay? Well, in this particular case, you know, if as y gets, or it, as I think about it in terms of, of my independent variable, as x gets really, really big, this whole function, 3 over x, becomes extremely small or extremely close to 0, okay? And we could do the same thing if x is negative, okay? It's going to get extremely small on the negative side. If x becomes extremely small, this function actually gets extremely big. So whether it be positive or negative, it could get bigger on either side of 0. So really, the values I can get for y is every possible value, except for 1. The only thing that I can't get is 0. There's no value I can plug in for x that will give me a 0 for y. Therefore, we would say the range of this function is all real values except for 0. And this, the domain in this case would be exactly the same, all real values except for 0. How to determine the domain and range of the functions for, for different forms. So we've got ordered pairs, we've got tables, etc. Um, how do we determine whether a, um, you know, what the domain range is of, of a function in a particular form? So let's just kind of go through them one at a time. The first is ordered pairs. So if I think about ordered pairs, the domain will always be the first coordinate or the values of x. Whatever the first coordinates are or the values of x will be the domain of that function. And the range of that function will always be the second coordinates or the values of the y. Okay. So if I look at this example, what is the domain and range of this particular function? The domain will be all of the x values. So 3, 1, negative 2, 6, and negative 1. So using set builder notation, we can say that the domain is the set of x such that values are 3, 1, negative 2, 6, and negative 1. So when we're looking at it in terms of ordered pairs, it's going to be a finite set of values. In other words, a specific number of values. In this case, there are a total of five values that would be part of the domain. Okay, So that's my domain there. Okay. The range is going to be all the the y values. So using set builder notation for that, it's y such that 2, 5, 
Notice how I don't write 5 twice, even though there's two 5's. 1 and 0. That would represent the y values, or the range of that function. Okay? When we look at it in terms of tables, okay, the idea is very similar. So if the independent and the dependent variable are not given when looking at a function in a table, it is assumed that the left column or the first row is the independent variable. Okay? Sometimes we'll say, you know, you'll give it a table and say which one is the independent one and which one's the dependent one. Other times, if they don't, we, we can assume that the left column or the first row is the independent variable. The right column then, or the second row, would be the dependent variable. So if I say, what is the domain and range of these given functions? Well, the domain here would be these values for this one. And for this one, it would be these values. So in terms of set builder notation domain, I'm going to do it for both of these. It's a set of values m such that we have 20, 30, 40, 50, and 60. And for this other values for x, it would be 1, negative 2, 4, and 5. And in terms of the range for these two functions, would be the values of n such that we have negative 2, 0, 4, 6, and 8. And the same thing would apply for this one. So all values of y such that they are equal to 3 or 2. Okay. Okay, so graphs, uh, the domain is the value of the graph's horizontal axis, and the range is the value of the vertical axis. So what is the domain and range of the given uh, function? So as I look at this function p of x, if I look at it horizontally, that's going to give me the domain. So the domain here is the values, if, if I'm going horizontally, it's going from right here to right here. Or in other words, from negative 3 to 4. So the way I'm going to write that, once again, I'm going to use that set builder notation, and I'm going to say the values of x such that negative 3 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 4. So with graphs now, it's not going to be a finite set of values. It's going to be an infinite set, and it's going to be all values between those two numbers. Okay. As I look at the range, graphically, it's going to be the values, so I'm looking at it from a, a, a vertical standpoint, so the lowest point vertically is right here, the highest point vertically is right here, so it goes from 2 to 5. So I can say the set of values of y is such that 2 is less than or equal to y is less than or equal to 5. So that would represent the range of values. OK, finally, we're going to look at uh, equations and how we can look at domain and range from, from that vantage point. The domain is the set of numbers that can be substituted for the independent variable. And the range is the set of numbers that can be substituted for the dependent variable. So when I look at this equation, y equals 3x plus 2, and I'm looking for the domain, well, it's going to be the set of values x such that x is all real numbers. And the reason why I say that is when I'm looking at it from an equation standpoint, I'm going to be looking for values that are going to cause a problem. Well, as I think about it, I can, I can put in any number greater than 0. Any bigger number is going to work. It doesn't matter if it's 1, 1,000, 1 million, 1 trillion. doesn't matter. And same thing if I look at the negative numbers. If I go negative, it doesn't matter how, how large from a negative standpoint those numbers get. It's still going to work in this equation. The other number we want to check is like 0. If I put 0 in there, I don't, I don't have a problem either. So there's no number that I would plug in for x that would cause a problem or make that function undefined. So it would be all real numbers. Okay? And then the same thing would apply for y. The values that would come out of that function, well, I can get any number out of that. 
So this would also be all real numbers. And I used an, an abbreviation for real. Sometimes you'll see me do that where I use two slashes and make an R out of it like that. That just stands for real numbers. Okay. Number two then, um, if I'm looking at the domain, what numbers I can put in. Well, here's one where I have to be careful because this bottom number, I know on a fraction I can't have a zero on bottom. So if I look at x squared, I know that x squared can't be equal to zero. In other words, x cannot be zero. So my domain is going to be all reals that are not equal to zero. And my range, same thing applies. I can't get a zero out of that. If this fraction can never be zero, if that fraction can be never be zero, that means this number right here can never be zero. Therefore, the number that I that that I wouldn't that this function could never be equal to, or the value of y that we could never get, is I can never get one because I'm always going to be adding or subtracting some number from one that is not zero. Therefore, y could never be equal to one. So my range here is the values of y that are all real numbers, not equal to one.